Now, we will take a circuit and it is a nodal analysis equations. Okay. Then, make changes to the circuit and see what changes occur in the nodal analysis equations. And in this lesson, I would uh, strongly encourage you to uh, pause the video after I make the change to the circuit, figure out what change happened to the nodal analysis uh, uh, equation setup by yourself and then compare it to what I show you as the answer. Okay. This is a better way of learning than simply looking at the answers that I provide. Okay. I will take the same circuit I have been uh, using so far. I one, R one one, R one two, R two three, R two two, R three three. Okay, and this of course is the reference node, and this is I three. By the way, by now it must be clear why I chose the subscripts the way I did. R one one is basically the resistance connected to node one and the reference node. R 1 2 is between node 1 and 2, R 1 3 is between nodes 2 and 3 and similarly, uh, R 2 2 is from node 2 to ground and R 3 3 is from node 3 to ground and so on and I 1 is the current source being pushed into node 1 and I 3 is the current being pushed into node 3. Okay. Now, we also have the uh, nodal equation set up for this which is times V 1, V 2, V 3 equals I 1, 0, I 3. Okay. Now, what we will do is, we will make various changes to the circuit and see how this uh, nodal analysis equation setup is affected. Okay. As I said earlier, please work out the effect of the changes yourselves and compare it to what I work out. Okay. So, first what I will do is, let me add another resistance here R A. So, please work out what happens to the uh, nodal analysis setup because of this. In this case, it is very obvious. The resistance R A is in parallel with uh, resistance R 1 1. So, the conductances simply add up. Okay. And also, if you remember what I said earlier, the diagonal elements consist of the total conductance connected to node 1. So, simply G A will appear here. Okay. So, this parallel combination tells you that wherever you had G 1 1 earlier, now you should have G 1 1 plus G A. Okay, and that is exactly what happens and that is also consistent with the diagonal element being the sum of the total conductances connected to a particular node. Okay. Now, let me remove this. Now, let us consider another change. Okay. So, what I will do is, let me get rid of this current source I 3 and connect it in the opposite direction from what I had earlier. Okay. So, please work out what is going to happen to the equations because of this. We have made changes to the independent source. So, this will change only the right hand side of the equation and again the answer is pretty clear. 
this element which was the total current being pushed into node 3 it was i3 and now it has become minus i3 that's all and that's anyway pretty obvious because we simply reverse the direction of the current source so this becomes minus i3 okay so now let's consider another change let me add a conductance between nodes 1 and 3 okay let me add a conductance between nodes 1 and 3 so what does this change please work it out now when i add a conductance obviously the total conductance at uh, those nodes to which i add the conductance will change in this case uh, nodes 1 and 3 that's where i added the conductance so the total conductance at these nodes will change so the diagonal elements corresponding to these nodes will change okay so we have node 1 here before the total conductance was g11 plus g12 now it will also have g13 and this is for node 3 so again earlier we had g23 plus g33 now we'll have g13 as well so g13 plus g23 plus g33 okay also another thing that changes is the off diagonal element because this conductance is connected between two nodes neither of which is a reference node okay so this element here which was earlier zero because no conductance was connected between nodes 1 and 3 now becomes minus g13 and similarly here this becomes minus g13 the matrix is still symmetric because we still have a circuit consisting of only conductances and current sources the matrix is still symmetric and this is what happens to the uh, nodal analysis setup okay now let's look at uh, another change okay so let me add a current source ix between nodes 1 and 3 in this direction between nodes 1 and 3 in this direction okay what changes uh, do you expect from this i have made changes to the independent sources connected to the circuit so this will change the right hand side of the circuit now what is this element the first uh, element of the source vector it is the total independent current being pushed into node 1 now it was originally i1 now it will be i1 minus ix because of the polarity of ix which is connected okay so instead of i1 i will have i1 minus ix now node 2 has been untouched so that will still be zero and node 3 it will become i3 plus ix because ix if you see it is being pulled from node 1 and being pushed into node 3 okay so these are the changes that occur to the nodal analysis setup okay and let me take one final example let me take one final example what i'll do is let me connect a current source like this ix between nodes 1 and 2 instead so again ix is being pulled from node 1 so this becomes i1 minus ix and ix is being pushed into uh, node 2 so it becomes plus ix and i3 will remain as it is okay so the source vector changes whenever you change the sources which are current sources in the present case okay 
So, with this hopefully the structure of the G matrix and the source vector they are clear. Again the solution of course, involves matrix inversion you can solve for it, but uh, the idea of this nodal analysis is to have a systematic way of setting up equations for arbitrarily large circuits. So, it is very important to understand the structure. Okay, because normally when you start off with circuit analysis, you look at the circuit and then maybe you identify something as the important uh, loop or node to start off with or maybe it is whatever is convenient for you. You start writing the equations in some ad hoc way and finally, when you have enough equations, you simultaneously solve them, but uh, for large circuits this would not work. Okay, uh, We have a certain number of equations we have to set up and we have to do it systematically. So, this nodal analysis is one way of doing that. Okay.